this video, we are going to cover three best practices for forms and form submissions on your Squarespace website. These three tactics are going to help you look professional and have your forms set up in the right way, proper, everything good to go. The three things that I'm going to cover are going to be replying to form submissions, having a backup. The second thing is having a backup for your form submissions so that you make sure you get all of them. And the third thing is going to be setting up a thank you page or a possible thank you message. So let's get into it. First one is going to be replies. Now, when I come in here and I fill out this form and I send it, let's just imagine we're doing this. So, so you could see here uh, on this test website, you'll see that I filled out the form. And as soon as I hit send, it says submitting, and then it says, thank you. I have this drawer feature here. So that's why it looks like that popped up a little bit, but it just says, thank you. Okay. So that form just got sent off and then it ends up in an email. Now it ends up looking something like this. So let me go back. So you can see here, this is what it looks like. What you're looking at right now is this message from Squarespace. It says form submission. It says contact page form. Now this is text that you customize. So you could put this as, you could call this anything. This is service page, consulting page, specific consulting page, anything, whatever you want it to be, you could put that here. And then once you click on it, this is what it looks like. So it says sent via whatever the website is and then all the information. Now this is a spam email, so I don't mind putting this here. This is just, I don't know what this is. Anyway, uh, if you get an email like this, it's spam. So what people typically do with this is they'll just hit reply. And that works because you reply to the message, it will pull the email and reply to it directly. But there is a better method, and this is what I recommend. So what I do is I go in here, I copy all of this, just like that. And then I have this email up. So you'll see here, this is where I write the email and here's the signature. Below it, this is what I do. I just throw in a few lines and I put original message and then go like that and then paste it in. And then you could even do that just for sake of, this could be bold, you could do whatever you want here. Um, and then you could get rid of this if you want. You could keep it whatever, does not matter. And then here you could write your message, hello. And then you could get back to the person. The reason this is so helpful is because it doesn't, it, it gives you control of the subject, which is really valuable. And you could also start a new thread especially if you have multiple form submissions, depending on how your email is set up, you don't want form submission messages getting mixed up in your email or connected to each other when they're not supposed to be. Just because they come from the same place doesn't mean they're for the same reason. So what I do is I always create a new message and then look at that. It populates some nice text there. Thank you for your submission, but it may be something like this. If it was this, the website, boom. And then I have full control. And then here I would just grab that email I'd copy that and paste it there. And as you can see, we're good to go. So this is a longer message. Typically messages are not this long. Again, this is like, yeah, so go like that. Um, so if the message was about that length, that's what the email would look like. And now you started a new thread. You kept the main message attached to the thread. It looks more professional because you can control how this looks, uh, however you want to control it, whatever you want it to look like. It's up to you. The next thing I want to talk about is we just submitted a form and it ended up in our email, but there are other ways to store form submissions. And I recommend always having at least two methods set up at any time as a backup. So let's take a look at that. Now I'm going to go into the editor where my form is and you'll see here's the form. I'm going to double click into it. And now we're going to really focus in on storage. So you'll see here. What are you looking at? Well, you're looking at, you could store it by sending it to an email. Unfortunately, you could only send it to one email at a time right now. As far as my knowledge is, you could only send it to one email at a time. We'll talk about that in a moment. You could send it to MailChimp because possibly they're signing up for a newsletter or something. You could send it through Zapier, which will allow you to connect it to a million other things. Um, or you could connect it to Google Drive, which basically creates a Google Sheet for you. And you could go from there. So you'll see here, sample website form submission. It's connected to that sheet. 
I actually created the sheet here. So you don't have to go to Google Sheets, create it, and then and then come back here and make sure the title's the same. You could actually just create it right here and go from there. So I always recommend having two, email and Google Drive as a backup. Even if you never look at it, it's great to just have it as a backup. Uh, so that way, if a form gets submitted and if there's any type of error or something comes up, you know you have a backup to possibly check if it went into the alternative. Now, finally, thank you page. Let's talk about a thank you page. So you'll see if you go back to content here, it says post submit, which basically means once they hit send or submit or whatever that is, what happens then? Now there's two main options. You could send a message directly or you could redirect them. This redirect feature is amazing. It's so valuable if you're tracking the user experience for advertising and your goal is for someone to fill out a form well if you send them to a thank you page that makes it really easy to track the user experience and make sure that your dollars are going into valuable resources for your business so let's take a look basically for the message you could adjust this i'm so happy it just says thank you for now but you could write whatever you want there and then that's what will show up when the form gets submitted Alternatively, if you want to create a thank you page, you create the page beforehand and then you come in here and you hit redirect. Once you do that, all you have to do is do a forward slash and then start typing in thank you. The URL is preferably thank you, uh, thank dash you. There you go. You're good to go. So what ends up happening here, let me hit save. And if we fill out that form again, this is my test website, so you can see it's a hot mess. So now when I hit send, it will take me to this thank you page. And so this is a thank you page, we created it. It's super simple, just hit this, create a new page. Thank you, done, that's it. That's all I have here. We'll get back to you within 48 hours. If you wanna be fancy or add a few tips or tricks or valuable information here, you could also put a summary of your blog post or you could put a summary of services, of additional content to read, any of that. And if you're doing some type of scheduling as well, you could use this thank you page to send people to after the fact. So it could benefit in other ways as well. The only thing I advise here is for the thank you page is once you create it, uh, again, make sure it's thank dash you preferably. And then what I would do is I just go to SEO and turn that off. You don't want that to get uh, indexed. It doesn't need to get indexed. The only people who visit the page should be people who have either filled out a form, booked an appointment with you, any of that. So. Just like that, you've created a thank you page. You have a form that functions beautifully. You have a backup. You know how to reply to people. All of that makes the form experience way better with Squarespace. Now, there are more advanced features that you can think about where if you have 20 forms on your website, they're all leading to the same funnel, but you're asking people over and over again to book a consultation or whatever that may be, sending them to the same Google Sheet or sending that form submission to multiple emails at the same time there's definitely more advanced features and systems you could put into place for this but for now this is a great starting point if you're just getting up and running to use these three tricks boom i think that's all hey thank you for watching this video if you got value from this video hit that like button when you hit that like button it tells the youtube algorithm some important information but it also lets me know that you got value from this video and if you did get value from this video and you want more content just like this, consider subscribing. We publish new videos every single week. Friday at 1 p.m. we post a new video, if not multiple videos throughout the week. If you have any questions, drop a comment below, but I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.